Hello, friends. Uncle Marv here with another episode of the IT Business Podcast, the podcast for IT professionals. No matter what you do, my job is to help you do everything that you can in your business to support other businesses better, smarter, and faster. This obviously is an audio podcast, and it is brought to you by Super Ops, the future-ready, unified PSA slash RMM platform for growing MSPs. Check them out. They're a new sponsor to the show. Head over to itbusinesspodcast.com and uh, click the link. You'll see what they're all about. Pretty good people. Today, I am joined by Kelsey Blankenship Lackland, and uh, we're going to have some fun, I think. Kelsey, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. I think we're going to have some fun, too. All right. So normally I would, you know, put a little caveat here, talk about what we're going to talk about, but I think I'm going to start with a question, and this is going to prove to the folks that the show is truly unscripted. Okay. Let me start with the question. (laughs) So I reached out to you, uh, what, three weeks ago on LinkedIn, introduced myself. And let me start with the question of what did you think when you saw my hello out to you? Um. Well, I thought it was very funny. Um, I'll start with that. Um, Part of that message was you reaching out saying that we should meet, um, which I get that frequently enough like hey like someone mentioned you but um you said we should meet because i had been nominated as a best guest on your podcast and i had never been on your podcast yet so that that i mean it gave me a pretty good laugh um and then i i thought you know okay it's just foreshadowing obviously like yes i should join you and be on here because the people think that they've already liked what they've heard. Of course. So somebody somebody thinks something very highly of us. So I said, yes. you know what? If that's going to happen, let me reach out. And let's also say that we probably could have done this sooner. I mean, yeah. I've seen you out of the shows. I don't know if you've seen me. Yes, I have. Okay. <laughs> did you know who I was before I sent that introduction? Um, I did because I'm decently active in um, – couple MSP online groups and you get mentioned here and there. Um, Uh I actually joined a live stream that you were going on live right afterwards. And so the people hosting were being um, cognizant of that. And they were like, Hey, we need to get off. So uncle Marv's can start, you know, like, yeah, yeah. yeah." All right. Interesting. Well, now I have questions (laughs) (laughs) like who are these people and what did they say? No, exactly that. Like, hey, like we need to, you know, hop off of this. It was the All Things MSP um, ah. live stream that we did not that long ago. And then I believe it was Henry Tim who was like, hey, this next one's starting. Like, you know, let's scoot on that way. Oh. Shift our attention and not steal his time. Oh, very nice. Two good people there, Eric Anthony and Henry Tim. They nice, are some of nice, the best. Nice shout outs there. So let me tell the audience who may not know who you are. You actually – work for CyberQP. I do Uh, indeed. I should probably first, before we go any further, say congratulations. You just got promoted. I did. Thank you. So you are now the- Exciting time of year. (laughs) Yes. You are now the channel development manager. I am. Although I'm a little curious because you were the community engagement manager before that. Yeah. (laughs) And then a community coordinator before that. Mm -hmm. Now, I know I could have gone to the LinkedIn thing and seen what the differences are, but what are the differences? Yeah. So it's funny because I actually have written out very detailed um, descriptions of each of those roles because I like to write. Um, But basically, they all were a lot of the same thing. Um, When I was community coordinator, which is what I started as, I came in and I was was hired by Jimmy Hatzel, um, another great industry name. We love Jimmy. Um, And so it was he and I, we were the only marketing team and we were really showing out at events. That was 2022. Um, We were just at every event we could be at. And so I was on top of deliverables and making sure that contracts got signed by the relevant people that needed to sign them and also shipping things. And actually all of our booth and every accessory that goes along with trade shows lived in my living room um, startup life. (laughs) So, um, 
as time went on and the team grew, we were able to shift that to, we now use a warehouse for that. And I make sure to tell everyone how much I love that service. Um, the people at my local FedEx probably miss me because I was there all the time. But so the next role that I got actually was more of like a just, you've already been doing all these things. So let's kind of shift your title because I wasn't necessarily coordinating. And I guess I was coordinating people, but it was just a little bit more relevant to what I was doing. And now I'm doing less of the logistics things and more content focused um, things. I'm still going to events. I'm still speaking. Like all of my outward role still looks the same. Um, It's kind of more just the behind the scenes that has changed. All right. Well, again, congratulations. And uh, we'll look forward to great things. Yes. <laughs> uh, so that's your day job. And you also, I think the reason you actually got nominated is because you run a podcast. Well, you know, run a podcast. You co-host a podcast. I do. I am half of a podcast. Um, and it's funny. I, I so you caught yourself there. It is called actually a podcast. Yes. <laughs> yep. I was going to say that you and Morgan McBride. Yes. Who was not able to join us today, but she sends her love. Um, and I will happily represent both of us while we're here. I actually do have a cardboard cut out of her head. So if this was visual, I could pull that out. We but. could do that. <laughs> Morgan probably said, Oh, it's just Marv. Don't <laughs> you do, you do. No, that. <laughs> no, she's actually not working this week. And I was like, no, I got it. I'll handle it. So. Just uh-huh. me. Just you. Yeah. Well, you're enough. Thank you. Isn't that what Thank our parents tell that. us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They definitely tell me I'm enough. Uh, so the, the podcast, actually a podcast, mm-hmm. uh, you guys started uh, not quite a year ago. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. We March of last year. Um, but I will say it was born quite a while before that. Um, Morgan and I... Oh, it feels like a lifetime ago. Um, I actually used to do a monthly webinar series called New Kids on the Flock. Um, she worked for Gradient MSP at the time. So flamingos were all the rage. And um, we had two other hosts with us. And Mary Signorelli was our fairy flock mother. And we had a, just a monthly, you know, little monthly webinar where we got together and we talked about career advice. You know, we interviewed people and their tips and advice that they had for working in the space. And it was a lot of fun. Um, Once Morgan no longer worked at Gradient, people pretty quickly were like, please tell me that y'all are going to keep doing that. And it's funny because people weren't really joining the webinars when we were doing them. But, you know, once it was like, oh, they aren't going to happen anymore. People were like, wait, don't stop now. So, that was like November, December. So we've got the holidays, you know, there's a lot of other stuff going on and we were like, let's just set it down for a second. We'll think about it. So we really hit the ground in January of last year, figuring out, we knew we didn't want it to be a webinar anymore. Um, It's really hard to get people to join a visual platform at a specific time. Um, And we want to come to people in the way that they want to be approached so we shifted to a podcast. We decided it would just be the two of us. And um, we hit the ground running from there. We've learned everything we know about podcasting within the last year. Nice. It's been nice. a lot of fun. Now, did you find the video part something where, you know, people were getting tired of video? I mean, we're coming, still coming off the pandemic. You know, yeah. people are Zoom crazy. Yeah. Um, definitely that had to be part of it. And I think also it had to be a little bit of our time. I think we were doing like 1 PM central. So I guess it would have been two o'clock Eastern, but I just feel like there's a lot happening at that time of day. It's, it's tough to get people. If that's their lunch break, they're going to go eat their lunch. So it's hard to get them to join. Um, I think even offering a recording is great, but how many recordings do you really go back and rewatch? I will say there are some I've made it a point to, but I love to watch them on two times speed. Give me that information quick. Yeah. <laughs> you can't do that when it's live. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. So speaking of, I should preface this by saying Jimmy is going to be on my live show tomorrow night. Oh, I love that. So I'll have to tune in. Yeah. I hope that would be one more. I may get a double digit viewership. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely brings in the viewers. Yeah. I will say. 
People love Jimmy. Yeah, I mean, but, with good reason. He's a good yeah, dude. Good man, good man. Now, what you say, I was going to reiterate, is true. Watching a <laughs> a video podcast or webinar, webcast, I mean, there's really got to be an incentive now for people to watch. Um, mm-hmm. I just concluded my networking one-on-one series, and that got some some good viewers. But, of course, there was the promise of a free gift. Mm-hmm. You know, that they could get. And, you know, it wasn't for everybody. It was one gift, but it was a nice gift. And my regular viewers, I mean, they're not a ton that watch live, but apparently they go back after the fact and will <laughs> watch and listen. So I hear what you're saying. Put it in a format that people can come back to yeah. on demand and that'll mm-hmm. make make much sense. So let me go back and ask you this question a little different way. So you were doing the webinar series and people asked, you know, if you're going to keep doing it, what was the feeling when you made the shift and said, we're going to do it a podcast. And and I'm going to ask you this because I've listened to your show and, and you, you guys yourself have said that it's hard to be consistent. It's hard yeah. to be regular. Yeah. Uh, how did, how did that shift go? So I will say with what we were doing with new kids, it was one, a regularly scheduled thing. We were working on it during the work day. You know, we were using our work emails and it was also tied into work. Like we actually, we talked about what we do and what our roles look like and, you know, how we can help MSPs. And because it was, I mean, I, I guess it was company funded, um, by gradient, um, there was always a reminder to tie it back to MSPs. And so that was something that anytime we were creating, you know, what we wanted to talk about, there was always, okay, and how does this relate to MSPs? Um, so now that we're doing it on our own, we don't have that reminder. Um, also, I mean, there's a lot of really good content out there for MSPs, but we've only ever lived on the vendor side. So, that's a little bit more of what ours is relevant to because that's our experience. Um, we've definitely, I mean, you know, MSPs are at the heart of what we do. So they're still involved, but I'd say there's no one else dictating what we can or can't talk about. Like there was before. And I don't mean dictating in a bad way. It's just like, there had to be approvals. There had to be like, actually, no, you're going to talk about this. Here's an outline, you know, stuff like that. And now it's completely up to us. Um, and we don't do it during the work day because it's not work. Um, it is for fun. It is our hobby. Um, and so that's proven also to be a little bit tough because she likes to go to yoga after work. And, you know, I like to go to my fitness classes after work and we're going to have dinner with our families, you know, we're going to see our friends. And so then it got to the point that she and I were getting on after 11 PM, my time, which is midnight, her time. And so it's just hard to stay motivated sometimes just like, Oh no, we can push that to another day. We don't need to work on it today. Um, I will say that listening to other podcasts fires me up for our podcast though. I think like, Oh, that's great. Like that's such a good topic or like, Oh, I get really inspired. I'm like, I want to, I want to inspire people. So whenever I do start to feel in a podcast funk, I definitely do just start go listening to other shows more kind of get back into the swing of things. Nice. Nice. So, I had a question that just left me because you went in a different direction. Sorry. (laughs) Well, let me ask this because since the show is not necessarily MSP centric, Mm -hmm. it's not tied to the business. Now you do talk business. You've had some guests on. You have my good friend Don Sizer on. We love Don. Yes. Yes, we have. And you allowed her to curse. I did. (laughs) I know that was so funny. I actually, she has her own podcast that I also really enjoy. Yeah, she does. She, allow, she allows cursing on her podcast. I do on mine. People just for some reason are afraid to. I don't know why. Because <laughs> uh, you know I have sponsors, but they don't control what happens here. Yeah, I don't know. Even with our own, I think about. It, I'm like, oh, my grandma might listen to this. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I post that I was part of something. I worry about. You know, my my grandma, mostly. That's the main person I think about whenever I'm like, mm, I should be careful. <laughs> so I used to worry about that with my family and my clients. That's probably the biggest yes. thing, uh, especially as an MSP, because a lot of what we do on this show sometimes is talking about mm-hmm. our clients. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, just what, you know, you and I talked about right before the show. <laughs> yeah. That would be a topic at some point in the future uh, on the show. But because you're doing this on your own, do you find yourself talking only about like the stuff that truly matters to you? Because sometimes you guys talk about personal stuff. Yeah. I mean, personal stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. You know, we have this great big freedom now that we didn't have before. And so there are sometimes we're like, oh, no, we couldn't talk about that. And then we're like, well, actually, no, we can talk about that. Like, yeah, this this is ours. We can talk about it. Um, and I think some of the topics that we hit on um, are often discussed in any kind of public setting um, and working against that stigma. Like, There's a little bit of power in that. Yeah. Um, of course, keeping in mind that we are publishing this on a public platform, anyone can go find it and go listen to it. Like you stand by it, you know, like we, we do have a couple, you know, we're not mentioning negatives about people by name. We're not trashing companies. Like, you know, we are being as real as we can while also being smart about certain topics. Right. Um, but yeah, no, that great big freedom is, it's an interesting hill to climb because, we were so excited to not have someone that we had to get approvals from. And now it's like, well, gosh, what do we do now? <laughs> yeah. So do you, do you know how much of your audience is other vendors that are your friends, the people that you work with regularly, or how many are MSPs who might be partners? So I don't have that exact data. I will say that we publish through Spotify for podcasters and it gives us, a really cool breakdown of the demographics who listen. We can see what countries people are listening in, what gender, what age range. Um, so like that's all really cool information. But as far as vendors versus partners or MSPs, um, I think that we both kind of just assume that no one listens. <laughs> and so we're always surprised when someone says that they do. Um, but I have found like, I, I think vendors listen more. Um, but then I will be at an event that we're, you know, running into somebody I haven't seen in six months and they say, Oh, I, you know, just finished the most recent episode of your podcast. I'm like, you listen to that. Like, that's so cool. <laughs> um, so we don't have a great way to measure it right now. Um, I think in our Facebook and LinkedIn groups, it is mostly vendors. Um, but we are working on making sure that we are not vendor focused because we do want it to be community and industry driven. All right. So you have a Facebook group. Yes, we do. All right. So we'll have to get links and put that on here. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. All right. I don't have one. We also have an Instagram. You have an IG? IG. <laughs> I just, I got an IG. I don't know what I'm doing with it, but I have one. You know, I have thought about that, how like Instagram, TikTok, they are not new user friendly. Um, no. I've been on I've been on Instagram, you know, since early college. And so I've had the chance to learn how everything works and it just becomes a second language. But then watching someone come to it and be brand new, like I actually taught my best friend this summer how to post on her story. We were seeing Taylor Swift um, in Seattle and like I tagged her in a story. And whenever you do that, then the person that you tagged can then repost to their own story. And she never posted anything. So I was teaching her how to do all of it. And it's just, there's gotta be a way to, Make this more intuitive for someone who's never used it before. So I will – a little transparency here. Yes, I'm on the IG, but I'm a boomer. I'll just be honest. So a part of me is like I don't get it. I don't know if I, <laughs> I, don't know if I want to get it, but it's, it's what all the kids are talking about. You know, <laughs> Put is. your business on IG. I'm like, no, why? My clients aren't I there. Yeah, I feel very strongly about, I mean, I love marketing. I've always had a passion for it. Um, I feel very strongly that not every business needs an Instagram. I mean, just think about what brands do you follow on any kind of social media? You know, if you don't even have an Instagram, like, you don't know who's on there. You don't know, like, who even cares. Um, I think sticking to the platforms that make sense for you are important and that you don't need to have you don't need to have a TikTok if you're not trying to reach people who use TikTok. Well, here's the way I look at it. When I'm sitting in a meeting, either trying to get a new client or having a QBR or some sort of meeting, those clients aren't looking at me and saying, hey, when are you going to update your TikTok, man? <laughs> yeah, you're right. 
Um, so I I go where they are and most of them are nowhere, you know, I'm too busy trying to, I'm trying to get on the golf course with the CEOs. Mm -hmm. I'm Mm -hmm. trying to figure out their little industry groups and how can I weasel my way into those without having to pay a fortune and, you know, give up time. I'm trying to figure out, you know, how to, you know, how to buy their company lunch without spending a fortune, you know, all those little things. Uh, Because that's what I'm doing. I don't see any of my clients on any of the platforms. I see a couple on LinkedIn. Yeah. And I see a couple on Facebook. But Mm -hmm. it's not a situation where I can reach out to them and say, hey, by the way, if you need network support, call me. (laughs) Yeah. But I'm sure there's ways to do it. There absolutely is. Yes. It's a matter of just being relevant for whenever they're thinking about something, you know, network support, like, oh, well, you know, I saw this on Facebook last week, but yeah, just, I say, don't kill yourself trying to create Instagram content, especially if you've never been on Instagram before this, this year. Yeah, That's my advice that you didn't ask for (laughs) as a millennial. (laughs) I'm going to ask you for more advice. (laughs) (laughs) I may have to start a consulting fee. So let me ask you this, because for all practical purposes, you're, shall we say, relatively new to the channel. And Mm -hmm. that's not about your age. That's about your years in our industry. I think you started in, what, 2020? Yeah. So 2021, kind of, I actually... I've had an internship on the enterprise side of things Um, while I was in college. You know, I worked for another enterprise company on a maternity leave contract. So it wasn't very long. Um, But so I've had little bits and pieces here, um, here and there, but fully in the space, January of 2021, I actually, what this coming Thursday will be my three year channel anniversary. Okay. So, so as you know, I'm, Primarily an MSP. Mm-hmm. For some people that want to acknowledge me as an MSP, because <laughs> um, and I kind of run the line. I talk to vendors, not just for my business, but for the podcast. Um, yeah. You're kind of doing a little bit of both now. You've reached out to MSPs. So, what do you think of our little channel? Sorry, there was a little bit of lag there. Oh. Um, but what do I think about the little channel? Yeah, um, I think it's a really cool place to be. Um, I actually had someone this weekend ask me how I even got into the space. And I explained, you know, how I knew this person who then met me, you know, I met this person and then I met this person and how it all kind of fell into place. And um, I tell anyone who comes to work in this industry that like these people all take care of each other, no matter what side you're on, there is something to learn from someone. Someone is happy to introduce you to someone else. Like everyone from at least in the space I surround myself with, everyone is very supportive and wants to see everyone succeed. Um, Of course there's, you know, the competition and the nastiness that there is probably everywhere, but I think it's a really cool space to grow and learn from so many different walks of life and point of views. Um, I'm, I'm very happy to have found my way here and I don't plan on leaving (laughs) Oh, so okay. you're stuck with me. <laughs> I'm, I'm not stuck with you. I don't use you guys yet. <laughs> oh, I but, just meant me as a person. No. <laughs> <laughs> you right. don't know what you did by sending that LinkedIn invitation, <laughs> Barb. Uh, well, you know what? The next conference I'm at, let's see, what's coming up next? I don't think I'm scheduled to be anywhere until March. Wow, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I can't be on the conference trail that is completely fair. 12 um, months a year. Look at me checking out my ca- my uh, calendar to see where I'm calendar. at. <laughs> I like it. We'll figure it out. We'll chat afterwards and talk about that. Uh, let me ask you this. What is the most annoying question you get from us as MSPs? Oh, the most annoying question I get from MSPs. Um. Well, I'd say probably in my role, because I'm marketing, and while I am typically one of the first people that MSPs encounter at an event, um, it always comes back to pricing, and I have zero control over what anything is priced at. Um, 
So that's probably one where it's just like, I cannot be helpful here. And I wish I could just explain to you, like, I mean, I do try to explain, like, I am, I am marketing. I have no control over what your account is going to look like or anything like that. But if you talk with the team, like they could probably help you out somewhere. Um, So I'd say that's probably the first. The only other thing I can think of is whenever I'm finally going to bed at an event and somebody's like, oh, like you can't be leaving us so soon. (laughs) Oh, I do this every week. I actually do have to go to bed. (laughs) I, I find that to be interesting for MSPs. A lot of times these events are kind of a break from your business. You know, you're getting away. You probably don't have your wife or kids with you or your husband and kids. And, um, you know, it's like, oh, this is a great time. I'm with my peers. You know, we're at the bar. We're having we're having fun. And for me, it's like this is a Tuesday and I have to get up and do this again and again and again and again. Like this is work for me. Yeah. Um, So I think that's probably always just a tough battle to have. Yeah, a lot of people treat it like vacation, and I can't. No. I just can't because a lot of times I'm actually doing work while I'm there as well. But I, first of all, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say I don't drink, but I don't drink as much as some of those people want me to drink. <laughs> I'm right there with you. <laughs> right there with you. Oh, my goodness gracious. All right. Well, uh, Kelsey, we should probably talk just a tad about CyberQP, although I want to have you back on later and just have a show completely about that. Uh, sure. But for people who are like, okay, you want to talk any tech at all? Uh, yeah, we'll t- <laughs> we will. CyberQP, basically a privileged access management company. Yep. Um, you guys are like kindred souls with who was it? CyberFox? I'm sorry. I'm, lo- I'm looking up for Kindred. my, sh- I'm looking at my yeah. shirts. Cause I, I think, yep. Yeah, there's, yep. I got your shirts together in the rafters. So kindred souls. I love that. Um, yeah. So CyberFox is also in the privilege access management space. We do a little bit of different things. Um, I know of MSPs who use their products and ours and they can speak to it much better of how the uses are different. Um, but yeah, we have a couple different tools just designed to help automate and increase your security. Um, you know, I, I could start with, you know, the questions I ask whenever I speak on stage. Um, how often are you rotating your privileged account passwords? Uh, never. <laughs> exactly. I get that a lot. I honestly, I need to, I need to just have a cricket sound ready to go on my phone whenever I ask that. So I can just hold it up to the microphone. Um, and then also we have end user verification for your help desk. So you can verify the identity of who's calling in straight from your PSA. Your texts don't have to leave. And then, you know, have that peace of mind that your um, customers are verified. That's a very brief overview. Um, we do a lot more than that, but all right. What's the, what's what's support. another question that you may ask? Oh, um, who here loves doing password resets? <laughs> I love it. That's so good. Um, and I actually, I also really like to open with, um, did y'all hear about the cyber criminal that got away last week? Um, you know what? I thought I saw a story that I tagged, but I didn't go back and read it. Tell oh, us. Well, he ran somewhere. Yeah. That was it. That's the, it's a joke. Oh, a joke. <laughs> See that? The millennial. He put on his glasses for that, guys. The millennial <laughs> got the boomer. <laughs> I love to open with that because I feel like everyone's already like, oh. I, I saw something that was like, there are three things that people are thinking whenever you come out on stage. Who is this person? How are they going to help me? And how long do I have to sit through this? So I love to open with that because I, I think it kind of sets puts everyone at ease. And it's like, okay, I might want to listen to what she has to say. Hey, you got you got our attention. And, I did. Uh, um, I am always open to other IT jokes because I'm going to have to start throwing some new ones in there eventually. <laughs> all right. So there were two major events last week. One was uh, Florida broke up a like a hundred and thirty person human trafficking ring. Oh wow! And then. Ransomware victims are being offered payment extension plans. <laughs> oh so, my god! That's some of the stories I tagged that I uh, was looking at. Um, well, one of these days I'll 
I'll throw everyone off and I'll actually reference one of those instead of just my ransomware joke. A uh, British library puts their catalog back online after an attack in 2023. Uh, this, this well, it could have been stuff. like three weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> All right. Well, we will get back on and talk about that. And I promise I'll, I'll be ready for the jokes. <laughs> hey, the whole point is to catch you off guard. It is. All right. So, Kelsey, apparently you and I are going to be friends. So. I I mean, it, this is... I'm already going to make a friendship bracelet for you. You've so. uh, you've uh, thrown down the gauntlet. I'm going to make you a mug. Oh, I love that. I'm going to make you a BFF mug. <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> we'll figure out to do Whenever that. Whenever I see you in March, that's when we'll swap. All righty. That'll be the case. All right, folks. So I'll have the links in the show notes. Uh, Kelsey, let me go back and grab your official title here. Kelsey Blankenship Lachlan, the Channel Development Manager for Cyber QP and co-host of the show Actually a Podcast along with Morgan McBride. I like your announcer voice. That's fun. Thank you. Has gotten me nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, can't win them all. Can't win them all. All right, so we are definitely going to do this again. We'll see you guys out on the road. Uh, head over to the website, folks, and check out those links. And I'll have both of those as well as links to the Facebook and LinkedIn groups and uh, Kelsey's book of jokes. We'll uh, start to create that (laughs) for everybody. (laughs) That's going to do it soon, folks. Um, Actually, that was a terrible outro. Uh, That'll do it. Um, If you get this and listen in real time, check us out tomorrow night live Wednesdays at 8 p.m., We're going to have Mr. Jimmy Hatzel on, and we're going to talk about AI as a service. That'll do it. I love it. We'll see you soon. And until next time, holla.